Hey everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today here at Slab City Library. I've only been doing the Let Me Level With You series. This is going to be my third uh, episode, I guess, of this type of segment. So you'll have to pardon me, I'm pretty new to this. Uh, but I wanted to just talk to you about some current events. The, the last couple weeks have been pretty fucking off the wall and a lot of shit's going on so um i'm just gonna fucking chill and open my beer here and let people show up because a lot of people end up being a few minutes late welcome how's it going tad ghostal nice name that's hilarious um hey lodi how's it going boognish will i am harry jones fuck yeah thanks for joining me hey terry how's it going buddy Hey, Will. <laughs> Three down votes before it's even started. Man, you yeah, know, that's not such a big deal because they uh, they're still giving me attention. So, um, And that's actually probably... I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, touch base on a few topics, <clears throat> but there are a lot of people that are um, upset by hearing the truth and they'd rather uh, go down convoluted rabbit holes and find false truths that, uh, you know, in, in reinforce their fucked up ideals, to be frank. But, you know, we're not going to worry about them. How's it going, Dan? we got a special guest here, the fly that keeps landing on my forehead. Watching from northern Minnesota. Hey, how's it going? Mama Point? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so my last live stream was about um, Minneapolis and the protests that started there and have now spread across the entire nation and even Canada and the UK and, and pretty much all, all major countries are, are taking notice. And you'll also notice that it's really hard to get straight facts from the news as well <clears throat> but it's a pretty weird time to be alive right now we're dealing with a huge pandemic that is putting a lot of people in the hospital and killing we're at like what 150,000 people worldwide dead of COVID now and then on top of that you've got civil unrest so it's a uh, it's a chaos cocktail. I gotta relight this. Hmm. And a lot of my friends are <clears throat> activists who previously were, uh, like myself, pro quarantine, pro masking, and not because we're afraid of viruses, but because if that's like. Nobody really knows what the fuck is going on with COVID. Like, even the top scientists are struggling to get newer information on how we can deal with this. So, as a common person, I'm not a scientist. Uh, my best understanding is that the best that we can do as just regular old civilians is wear a mask and keep your distance from people. And that will help s slow the spread. And unfortunately... Um, our government is so fucked up and so broken and rifted that we haven't really had <clears throat> a reliable way of, um, you know, a re reliable support from a system that's supposed to support its people. So there's a lot of confusion in that, a lot of misinformation, and a lot of distrust of the government, of science, of the media, and at this point... It's, it's important that we, the people, discuss with each other what we see going on in real time so that we can get a better handle on how we can, how we can deal with it. So, yeah, like, if all you can do is stay away from people and wear a mask, please do that. Wash your hands and, and all that. That's still going on. But... Also, there's people being tear-gassed and shot in the streets, and 
let's be straight up. Uh, we are now living in a fascist police state. Not that we haven't been, but, you know, the curtain has been falling. And people can't ignore it anymore. Except for the people that really want to. Um, and that's, uh, that's uh, another thing I kind of was trying to get, get my fingers on the pulse of. Um, because there's been a lot of conspiracy theories going around about all of this and who's behind it, who's the real enemy. And, um, one, one such conspiracy theory after my last live stream, most of the comments were actually pretty good. There was good discourse in the comments section and a lot of people saying some really on point stuff. And I really appreciated that. But then there was a few people who uh, were really upset that I didn't mention George Soros. So um, I took it as another conspiracy theory, obviously, like the idea of somebody funding an entire uh, revolution and like all of this political unrest is just like completely absurd. And I knew that, so I kind of ignored it at first, like, okay, whatever, you guys are fucking crackpots. But then I actually went uh, today and I looked up a few of those people. I looked up, uh, you know, the whole Bill Gates conspiracy, which, I mean, is unavoidable to see people mentioning the Bill Gates thing, the vaccines thing, the fucking George Soros thing. And um, <clears throat> I was expecting to have to go down this deep rabbit hole. I was, like, prepared to spend, like, hours and hours fucking researching this shit to find the real conspiracy that like all these pe people are telling me to pay attention to and it literally took me five minutes of googling to understand who exactly is uh, interested in perpetuating these conspiracy theories and this propaganda um, it's anti-semites uh, I'm just gonna be plain about it so George Soros is Jewish Bill Gates is Jewish. That's not to say they're great people, like, because, I don't know, like, other than that, they're really rich and they're Jewish. So, <clears throat> the the whole thing behind these conspiracy theories that I've, that I've seen, uh, even, like, uh, flat earth theory, it all cycles back to the Jews, uh, the Jesuits thing, the Illuminati shadow government, whatever the fuck, that all circles back to, um, to to Jewish people and anti-Semitic um, ideology, which if you look at where that leads to, um, clearly, obviously, that has ties to Nazi propaganda and white supremacy. So thanks, Terry, for that. Thank you. Um, so if you really want to see who's behind the propaganda, who is who is spreading um, this agenda, just look to who it benefits. If you find yourself getting deep into some conspiracy theory that causes you to distrust your fellow common humans and separate ideologically from them, if, if your ideology pushes you to the fringes where you feel so disempowered to do anything about it because the alien overlords are coming down to pose as wealthy Jews who want to take over the world in secret then or like the Hillary thing you know Hillary Clinton and like as though she has the power to I mean I'm not saying Hillary Clinton is a cool person either but like just these big grand conspiracy theories that take the power out of the common people and cause you to distrust them if you find yourself going down a rabbit hole that makes you feel that way that makes you look at other people like what are you hiding who are you then you should probably like second guess that and try to find who might be behind that agenda and who it benefits. In this case, it benefits white supremacists and Nazis who are trying to take over our government who may and already have at all levels of government, the police, uh, higher, you know, federal government and um, just people that want to protect their uh, white way of life. The, those people are trying to sow seeds of discord, whether they're consciously aware of it or not, but they're trying to sow seeds of discord among the common folks so that we don't trust each other, so that we don't see the true enemy, which is plain as goddamn day, if you really think about it. It's the fucking wealthy people 
wealthy whites who are trying to protect their wealth and continue to exploit the common folk. And to a lot of people, they're trying to find... They're, they're not satisfied with that for whatever reason. Maybe it's fear. It's probably just fear. They want to continue being in fear and have an excuse not to do anything about it except for to know some deep non-truth about stuff and you know it's like the flat earth thing like you're all blind sheeple and you're confused and we're the only ones who know the truth okay well if it was the truth then what what were you going to do about it like how are you going to save us from that untruth you can't because your boogeyman is the alien overlords or the jesuits or the lizard people who are really in control and nobody else can see it and nobody else is listening to you therefore you can continue to sit in your complacency and your fear not doing anything and you can feel okay with yourself in that so it's it's kind of like a mental crutch almost like uh almost like religion at that point you know but there's a lot of ways that you actually can help and that's what some people here in the chat are mentioning food not bombs is a great organization and there are like there's so many things that you can do to help your common folk and whether or not there's a big overreaching conspiracy to enslave the human race or whatever um the fact of the matter remains that in the here and now there's things that we can and cannot do to improve our situation so there's no really point in deluding yourself about things outside of your control just focus on the things inside of your control like uh donating to people in need and helping to spread factual information after actually doing your research instead of just reactionary shit that you think is big news but it's actually irrelevant and designed to confuse you so i guess that's my public service announcement use your fucking brain and verify information from multiple sources, not just one source. Rosie had to explain the difference between true skinheads and sharps today and neo-Nazis. Yeah, that's another division tactic too. Like, um, and in my last live stream, I mentioned uh, the Boogaloo Boys and how what I knew about them was just like simply stating the facts. I know that they don't trust the police. And that they like guns and uh, they've been preparing for civil war for like a few years now and traditionally have been associated and tied with white supremacy but um, I had an inkling that maybe the ties with white supremacy were actually designed by uh, propagandists to further divide because you know people that want to stand up for people and have like full riot gear and guns are pretty nice to have and in some cases they have actually um like been on the front lines protecting people so i still am not i'm not condoning what they do but i'm saying that that's another thing to keep your eyes on like um because a lot of these groups like antifa um that has been labeled as a terrorist group and that's a more blatant uh, example of them trying to hold up one group of people and say, well, these are the bad ones. These are the ones that are behind all of this unrest because they just want chaos and whatever. But Antifa isn't even really a vast, it's not really an organization. It's just a loose collection of individuals who identify with anti-fascism. So... I mean, that's really it. The only identifier of Antifa is being anti-fascist. So that's that's a political campaign to further divide people. And that's a pretty blatant one. You can just read about it in the news and from multiple news sources outside the U.S. and within the U.S. and independent sources as well. Um, Brittany Sparkles. Oh, that's another conspiracy the china communist party one that's a com common one that i've seen as well and that's another um that's another one of those particular conspiracy theories that's meant to sow uh distrust among the people so you might want to go and check into that because 
Um, that's that's just another seed of racism that they're trying to plant and distrust among people. So, like I said earlier, if if you're hearing some sort of conspiracy that causes you to distrust common folk, then question it. Absolutely question it. And look behind that and see who is propagating this information and what interest it is to them to give and and uh, to give out this information and infect people's minds with these ideas. <clears throat> Oh, uh, thanks for posting that, Will. Yeah, I got t-shirts, guys. Um, hit the like and subscribe button. And, um, because, I mean, this is only my third episode talking about this kind of stuff. But, I mean, I can't just put up videos for your entertainment while all this shit is going on. Like, that seems, to me, that seems irresponsible. And until a few things get figured out in our society... You can you can just expect that this is my show now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'll get back to drinking, smoking, and burping in your face later when things are a little bit better, and we can have fun. But right now, there's, you know, we're we're heading toward, if not already in like, a civil war type of situation, and they've they've got unidentified law enforcement just. Jackboot motherfuckers marching all over DC, oppressing the people, and even mainstream news sources aren't like, like ones that I most associate with being honest. They're not even giving you the full story because they can't. They're, they're not of those demonstrations. They're just outside of them, looking in as best as they can. But they also have their own political affiliations and leanings. So. Thanks, Will Davidson. I appreciate that. Um, so, you're only getting part of the story. To get the full story, you need to talk to actual human beings on the ground that are part of these protests. And they are talking. They're all over the place. And um, it's only by communicating between us, the common people, that we can get the full picture. We can't trust them to, to give it to us. You know, the revolution will not be televised. That's, I mean, that's a fact. It's too threatening to them. You've got people who are, um, thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, Rosie. Um, oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm just going to drink my beer for a second and calm the fuck down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. It's crazy. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to go... <laughs> uh, one of my unpopular opinions is that I don't vote. Um, and that is because... A, I'm an anarchist. B, I'm not going to cast a vote for a system that I don't support, that doesn't support me and my fellow humans. The day that I vote for a president will be the day that I actually truly believe in the functionality of said person to be in that position and we are so far away from that at this point i want total reform we need to tear it down and build it from the ground up because it's infected all the way to the roots so all you people who who are you know getting all butthurt about never biden or talking about like vote blue or fuck you you know i don't know what the saying is but fuck that like that's more propaganda. Fucking liberals and centrists and fucking complacent people are among to blame just as much as white supremacists in us getting to this point. I'm not going to vote for a fucking rapey ass creep. Fuck that. I don't care who it is. I mean, the only options we have are rapey ass white old piece of shit. I mean, Donald Trump is way worse than Joe Biden, of course. So much worse. But Joe Biden's still bad. So why the fuck would I vote? Like, if you're voting for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil. So what the fuck good does that do? 
The system was built on subjugation. Yeah, yeah, Rosie, maybe if uh, we tear the whole system down, then we can appoint Bernie Sanders as the new re Republic president. I don't know, what the fuck. I don't care. Like, I, I don't think that anybody should be president. I think that there should be, like, multiple presidents, like a table of, like, five people or more that are actually specialists in some way that actually have, like, legitimate qualifications for leading an entire nation, especially this big. I don't think that there should be nations this big anyway. The only reason that it interests them to be this big, um, and a lot of people are anti and pro big government too, like, I think that's beside the point. I think that, that it needs to be on smaller scales too. Like, you, you can't have a big nation without a big government to govern it. So pick one, you know, have a big ass nation with a big ass government or have smaller, you know, like the states with their own smaller government and just work together in some way. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a sociologist or a politician, but yeah, like we need to decentralize the system because it's so dangerous this way. And we've seen that now because a big, dumb little tiny hands baby is fucking calling out fucking literal Nazis to come and push people out of the streets who are are perfectly within their right to be in those streets. Like, it's in the Constitution. If the government no longer serves the people, it's not only our right, but it's our duty to overthrow it and rebuild it in a way that we need it to be. That's that's what the founding fathers wanted and you know it's it's in there so anybody who's saying that like protesting is un-american then they're delusional and uneducated and should probably go fucking open a book mm -mm -mm. all right welcome folks that just arrived appreciate you for joining us and whether or not you like my opinions, uh, feel free to weigh in in the comments section. And, you know, I want to have these conversations. Maybe you don't don't believe what I'm saying and you think that I'm blowing smoke up your ass and that the Chinese Communist Party hired me to say all this shit. Go ahead and fucking go in the comments section and talk about it all you want. <clears throat> or maybe the Jews are behind this, huh? Maybe we should uh, round up all the non-human... You know what? Yeah, that's like a real conspiracy theory, and I'm fucking sick of it. Um, one of my acquaintances here that uh, comes to the library it came came to me, and he's been trying to get me to watch this uh, this propaganda program, and I've been putting it off, but I finally like looked into it uh, a few minutes ago to check it out. It's True News, T R U News, and. Um, so after a cursory couple glances over some of their video titles, I quickly deduced that they're uh, very anti-Semitic, and um, that's all I really needed to know. So that, so this all cycles back to, like I said, the Jews, which is. It stems from white supremacy, obviously, from way far back, as far back as the idea of race was developed. <clears throat> and um, the, the, the main premise here is that the Jewish, uh, like the Jesuits and the Zionist Jews are actually not human at all, and they're like skinwalkers or some shit. And they're trying to control the world and it's basically this whole conspiracy theory that they're actually some type of alien entity or non-human entity and that's so fucking stupid um like i could accept lizard people before i could accept <laughs> the before I can accept that Jews are aliens. Um, and of course that's what they want you to think. And I was discussing it with one of my friends earlier. Like, why though? Like, why the Jews specifically? And um, it's because 
anybody could be Jewish. Like, you, you, it causes distrust among your fellow people. So, like, anybody, black, white, Asian, fucking whatever, anybody could have you know, be of Jewish descent. So it just sows those seeds of distrust, and it's like the perfect, the perfect propaganda. Um, Brittany Spargles, if you heard it was the FBI, that if you go deeper into those conspiracy theories, um, you'll find that people think that the FBI is controlled by the Jews, and, you know, and all the oligarchs are Jews, and it's, it's really just like, um, Nazi propaganda. Like, the Nazis didn't all die in World War II, obviously. You know, they said the Third Reich will rise again, or whatever the fuck stupid shit they say, and, I mean... Yeah, they they put a lot of work into doing that, and they're totally doing it, and yeah, <laughs> the the overwhelming majority of people in power are people that want to oppress, and people that want to hold on to the idea that they're superior because of their race. And for the people that are minorities that are also law enforcement, you know, there's some, uh, what is that called? Um, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, it's like that, if you ever saw the movie Django, the, the guy that works for the plantation owner, uh, what is, Samuel L. Jackson plays him, but he's just like the most vile fucker, and it's, it's kind of like that uh, that sort of syndrome, you know, if you, if you play nice with the slave masters, they'll treat you better, basically. Uh. Hey folks, welcome. <laughs> All right, some good conversations going on in the, in the chat here. Um, Aaron doesn't know what's up. Yeah, no, nobody really does, except, you know, we can't know all the big shit, but we can know the shit that we can see and hear with our own eyes. And what I see in here are people like you and I, and people with darker skin tones especially, getting pushed around by a system that doesn't value us as humans. Is the Zoros, Soros conspiracy entirely anti-Semitism in my opinion? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, it... It is. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure, actually, you know what? I'm I'm sure that the, the conspiracy theory about any... Jewish person is definitely, um, like, anti-Semitic propaganda, but also, there are in the system that we found ourselves in, and that's the people that we should be focusing on, um, on outing, and, and it's, it's a, it's, it's rampant throughout our government. Like, even even the UK government has ties to, um, like, I'm sure you all remember how Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, right? So, there were, like, there was a lot of names that got brought up in that case. And since that has happened, that entire case has been completely buried in the media. The only reason people even are still getting news about developments on that is because of individuals sharing information on the videos, uh, or on the internet, in, in memes and shit. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the chat here. Um, but there was a lot of, a lot of big names. Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, fucking, what's his name from the UK? Prince Henry or some shit, and I'm sure there was a lot more. So, it's not, I mean, there's... There's a lot of disgusting shit going on with oligarchs. They've always been out of touch. Um, jo Donald Trump is obviously one of the most vile um, uh, instances of that. 
Lodi, do you think YouTube is censoring your posts there? Because nobody's deleting your stuff. I gave my uh, mods instructions to be a little bit more lenient with um, moderating the chat today. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. I actually was expecting my last video to get flagged or something. But, um, you know, I'm trying to keep it, like, YouTube legal. Even though YouTube is a pile of shit, too. Every time you write Jew, it's censoring you. Wow. Holy shit. Okay, well, YouTube is apparently censoring people from saying Jew in chat. That's pretty fucked up. So it's like we can't even identify who's being targeted here. Hmm. Oh, Aaron got it. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, well, maybe Lodi is just having some connection issues. That is pretty weird, though. Um, huh. Well, anyway, <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot going on. It's, it's been weird. How are you folks doing? Anybody near some hot zones? Seeing some interesting stuff? Anybody live in the city where there's protests going on? HP is from Portland. Nashville. Austin. Alright. Friend got COVID mask and goggles ripped off and tear gas. Fuck. Yeah, I've seen videos of that happening to a bunch of people. Yeah, Portland's been going off. <clears throat> Quiet protest in my town today. That's good, Earth Gal. It seems like the uh, the protests that aren't being heavily policed are not becoming violent at all and are very peaceful. That's what I've been seeing. So it almost seems like the police are the instigators, doesn't it? L.A., yeah, L.A. is going off. Alive of San Bernardino burnt. Yikes. So I'm listening to some of the black community on Insta. Believe the Soros BLM being corrupted thing. Alright, Megan Craddock, I'll look into that. That's the thing too, like, um, you know, make sure that when you are doing your research, be, um, be willing to adjust your understanding of the situation when presented new information as well. Because if you're just holding on to um, your understanding of something or um, a narrative and you're not allowing adjustments to your opinion and your worldview and you're just clinging to that narrative, then you've been propagandized. So just... You know, I might be wrong about George Soros. He could be some kind of evil mastermind that's funding civil unrest, but the way that I understand it, it just seems stupid. But who knows? I mean, can't fucking surprise me anymore. 2020 has been fucking a hell of a year. Anyone seen the teenager from Austin use his target practice? No, I did not see that, Rosie. That sounds awful. Steve G says Bill Clinton killed Epstein. Uh, you're a simpleton. Bill Clinton himself did not go into that jail cell and strangle him or whatever the fuck. It was a combined effort of a lot of politicians. So open your fucking brain up and rethink that. Your true enemy isn't just one guy. It's not just Democrats or Republicans. It's all of them. Trish Williamson says, look out for brick cops. Yeah, they've been caught on film planting bricks in strategic areas in urban environments to try and encourage people to um, start rioting. Let's 
Saw some fuckos rip down a peaceful protest sign. That sucks. Uh, Beta Boy Elvis gave me two dollars and asked me a dumb question. Clearly, I shaved my head. Thanks for the two bucks, though. Unicorn Riot is yeah. Thanks, Boognish, for mentioning that. Uh, Unicorn Riot is on scene in Minneapolis and has been uh, uploading live streams when they can about what's going on. So if you want to actually see firsthand from somebody that is there, Unicorn Riot uh, on YouTube is a really good source for that, actually. Friend here in LA got hit with one of those. Yeah, the rubber bullets they are doing at point blank right in people's faces. Propagandied. <laughs> I'm I'm grateful to Beta about the two bucks, guys. Don't worry about it. But also, like, clearly, I just shaved my head, and I don't feel like talking about my hair right now. I think that's ir irrelevant. Government plan this and blah blah, blah more. Uh, uh, so many conspiracy theories. All right, let's see. I'm trying to catch up with all you guys. I'm surprised F Epstein didn't have an if I die insurance policy. Um, you know. Man, that Epstein thing was like an actual conspiracy. It's not like a conspiracy theory. That's something we all saw in real fucking life. Like, oh my god, Will I am. If you keep spamming the room, I will remove you from the chat. Um, we all saw that. That's a real thing that happened. It's not like... It's not like a fake fucking story that was generated to make people outraged. It was done and it was suppressed. And people paid more attention to it than they were really supposed to. And we can't forget that kind of shit. That's the kind of stuff that they're willing to do to hide who they are and what they're actually doing. Donnie Beaver says Jeffrey Epstein isn't dead. He, I mean, he might not be. They could have sacrificed some fucking nobody. I don't think that they're above that. If they're not above murdering somebody in their jail cell to hide the names of the people behind that particular conspiracy, then they're probably not above killing somebody else instead and saying that it was Jeffrey Epstein and they do have a lot of power like international government powers they can just nab people Jilly Farley there are so many people involved it will be buried Prince Andrews got away with his dirty deeds yeah we can't let that happen like honestly honestly all this civil unrest and people fighting for their rights it's like it's so much bigger than they even realize, I'm sure a lot of people. We're seeing the police forces and the government being questioned for the morality of, you know, what they're doing. And if they really are here to protect and serve us, which clearly they're not. Um, but it goes so much further than that. Yeah, it's as evidence. Like, we might actually have to go and, like guillotine all the billionaires yeah it might come down to that and i mean if that's the only way to rise up like back in uh back in the days of kings and peasants you know as if you weren't noble if you weren't nobility you were basically just a fucking dirt person and you had no rights and there was no way that you could rise out of your class and the peasants rose up and they fucking created what was it i think the first like constitution kind of thing the magna carta right and which guaranteed like actual rights to common human beings so that's kind of what we're doing now but on a much larger scale because it's global now It's all pretty big shit, like, it's hard to keep track of, and there's, 
there's going to be more developments in the future that are going to change how we view things and how we're going to how we're going to move forward, but hold the fuck on because it's going to get real weird. And this is not even like this this isn't going to be the end of it. It's not going to be like, okay, well, we fired these cops, these cops went to jail and vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> That's not going to be the end of it. Like people aren't going to be satisfied with that. And if it does get quelled, if that's what it takes, like, and people just relax after that, then it's going to flare up again in the future when people realize again um, that they're being oppressed because it's going to take so much more than just some amendments and some new law being written that protects people better. It's, it's a lot deeper than that. Yep. Hang on to your hats, kids, because it's, uh, it's a, gonna be a wild ride. <laughs> as though it hasn't been already, but as somebody pointed out a year, uh, earlier in the chat, um, the year is, like, halfway over already, so let's just ride it out and see where it goes. Jilly Farley says, I don't understand why won't you vote Biden? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Because he's a damn creep. Fuck that guy. I don't fucking like him. I don't want to see his face again. Much less see it all the time in the news as the president of the United States. That's gross. No gun rights in Canada. Yeah, I hear that. That sucks. I personally am, uh, I'm a gun owner, I like having my guns, I don't like people trying to take my fucking guns away from me, and to all those people out there who are like, oh, my rights, my gun rights, and my freedoms, and I need to have weapons so that I can, you know, form a militia in case the government tries to rise up against me, well, now is that time, so if you were that person who was saying shit like that, and you're not suiting up and ready to go on the front lines and protect your fellow Americans, then you are just jerking off and you should shut the fuck up and sit down. Sit in your little fucking panic room cabin like Donald fucking Trump and eat your cheeseburgers and just shut up. Now is that time. Uh-huh. That's why I actually, like, have respect for the whole boogaloo thing. I could I could have a misconception of what they're up to, but I haven't seen any reason to think that they're some kind of um, infiltration tactic or anything. I think they're just really a grassroots movement of gun owners that don't trust the government, honestly. So... Hopefully that's the case. In which case, cheers. Because fuck white supremacists. And fuck racism. And fuck Donald Trump's fascist police state. And uh, fuck cops. Fuck you. Especially you, pig. If you're a cop and you're watching this, fuck you. Resign. Cheers, fuckers. Love it. I wish that I had another beer on hand, but I don't. Ugh. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go grab a beer. Mm, mm, mm. Uh. Ugh. Your regularly scheduled programs of hanging out at the bar and shooting the shit will continue after the revolution sorts itself out. Hold on, I'm going to go to the other side bar here. Um, those are boxes of produce that I've been trying to distribute to the people of Slab City, and there's... I distributed most of them, but there's still some left. So if you happen to be watching from Slab City, please come and get produce.
good stuff too. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Oh, I got a, uh, I got a pull question for all you folks in chat. Um, how many of you have had a cop pull a gun on you when you weren't being violent? Anybody? I know I have. Like, three times at least. Anybody else had cops do some bullshit to you? How's it going, Michelle? Yes, Will Davidson. Thanks, Rosie. Appreciate that. Wow, lots of people. <laughs> That's not surprising. I wish that I was surprised by this. And to any of you that might have the idea about, oh, well, the protesters only care that black people are being killed in the streets. Uh, no, they're protesting police brutality, and it's just more relevant to them to remember the black folks because there's an entire system in place to oppress them. Um, but yeah, police are unfair and fucked up to white people too and, and other people of all races. And if you're one of those people that's like, well, what about the white people? It's like, well, yeah, yeah, become upset about that. Like, why are you trying to pit it against other people? It's not whites versus blacks. It's us, the common folk, against our oppressive government. Wow, a lot of you guys. Plenty of shit happened to your partner. Aaron, your partner is a person of color, right? My, uh, I'm so proud of my little brother. Um, he's been cleaning up uh, trash and helping do support for the riots in Minneapolis. And he's a young black man, and he has been pulled out of his car and pinned to the ground with guns to his head for driving in the wrong fucking neighborhood. Like, that's extremely fucked up. Like, I've been treated fucked up by the police before, but never because I was the wrong color in a neighborhood. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's fucked up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, um, so my little brother did an interview with another friend of mine who does an international podcast, um, and I'm, I'm featured on it talking about being queer, basically, and um, being, like, counterculture and running the library, which, it's really good, but my little brother is going to be the next episode, it's called Latitude Adjustment by E. Maddox, and I will post links to the interview in my next live stream after it comes out. And then you guys can check that out and hear firsthand from my little brother, a Minneapolis native. Uh, I don't like saying native. Uh, a person who grew up in Minneapolis. Uh, a black man who is up in the shit right now and being uh, socially active and just really doing his family proud. So, um... That's that'll be really cool. Just hear it straight up from a person instead of you know the media reporting secondhand all the time. Oh, Mud Dog One thinks that the riots are 100% manufactured and Floyd isn't even dead. Uh, Mud Dog One, you should be thoroughly ashamed of yourself for being a fucking dumb shit sheeple who can't think for yourself. Um, Sorry about your brain deadness. Uh, I hope that maybe someday science can figure out how to revive it. You stupid piece of shit. <laughs> what an asshole. How far removed from reality do you have to be to buy into that bullshit narrative? That's amazing to me. All right, anybody got any other questions? Probably going to fuck off after this beer, so, you know. <laughs> Cheers, Nomad for Life. Mm. 
Elizabeth Jones, hey Cornelius, I love your videos, keep up the podcast. Well, it's not really a podcast, but I guess it kind of is. Um, n- none of these live streams that I do have any sort of script or anything. It's just, I'm just freeballing it here. You guys are experiencing it as I'm thinking it. Um, but I do spend a lot of my time doing research, uh, especially now, and just spreading information. So if you want to keep track of uh, what's going on day to day, join the Discord. The Discord server link is in the description. So if you want to keep talking about this, we have a room specifically for politics and different theory uh, where you can participate in the discussion further with other folks that are here in the chat. And um, so check out the Discord server and otherwise like and subscribe and you can you can be notified when the next live stream goes up and I'll definitely be talking about this kind of stuff again in the future because it's not over and it's just going to develop there's a lot more at play here than we can even begin to realize oh also keep uh, be aware of bots there have been a lot of bots online that I've been seeing on Twitter and on Facebook even like completely fabricated accounts that are spouting different buzzwords and different uh, propaganda information so if somebody's saying something that sounds um, a little bit fishy to you go ahead and check their profile and just kind of look through it and if they aren't, if they don't seem like a real person, same thing over and over again, or if they're only posting about certain stuff, because there's groups out there, I'm not sure exactly who, there's probably multiple groups out there who are creating and putting out bots. Yeah, my dog one probably is a bot, so <laughs> Melissa Skillins. Um, keep that in mind, and, you know, just keep your eyes open, remain vigilant. Now is the time where the war for your mind and your conscious, uh, your conscience, and um, that's that's what they're fighting for right now. So look behind the narrative. Look further than the narrative. Not like further into the narrative, like all these conspiracy theorists wants you, want you to do. They want to bait you and draw you in and draw you further, and it all just leads back to these um, these conspiracy theories that want to divide us. Look past that and trace the narrative back to its source, and that will reveal a lot to you. And if you're not doing something to help out the common folk right now, you should be. Uh, if, if nothing else, donate to charity, as I've got a couple of links in the description that you can donate directly to funds that help people in Minneapolis specifically that are disadvantaged or affected by the protests. And um, otherwise, try and spread useful information to people. Um, or go and actually get involved in your home or bring me- medical supplies to people. And also, just be aware that there is still a pandemic and that a lot of people are probably, like, a lot of people are being exposed right now. But that's the thing is this is a greater threat systemic racism and nazis are a greater threat than a super deadly widespread virus right now and that's just the reality that we live in so you know welcome to the fucking apocalypse kiddos let's fucking strap in and i'm i'm gonna survive the apocalypse i don't know about you but i'm gonna fucking survive the apocalypse so you know wash your hands wear your mask uh Wear your gas mask for the protests uh, and and make sure that you defend yourself and defend your friends and get factual information and listen to black people. Listen to what they're saying because if you're not listening to what black folks are saying about their experience right now, then, then you're not living in reality. If anybody 
in our society. Our society is only as good as the people that are most disadvantaged. And right now, some, well, since the founding of this nation, <laughs> people have been at a great disadvantage. And that's just the reality that we need to face now. If we don't pull the white hood back, we won't see who's wearing it. So we need to do that now. And we need to pay attention and we need to listen to black people and what they're saying because black lives matter. They have always mattered. And if you disagree with that, then you're a goddamn racist and fuck you. So that's all there is to it. Thanks, Donna Ellsworth. I appreciate that donation. Uh, fuck you, PF Gray. All lives matter. All right, so this fucko wants to dis, uh, derail the conversation about how black lives matter by acting like, um, by... That, that's a typical derailment technique. Oh, you're saying Black Lives Matter. Oh, hashtag Snowflake got triggered. My life matters too. Okay, well that's like if, um, you know, like say you're at your baby's funeral and you're talking about how much it hurts to have lost your baby and somebody came up and was like, well, babies die all the time. Don't you care about the other babies that are dead? Like, yeah, that's how stupid you fucking sound. So fuck you. Get over your little little milk and cookies snuggy safe space and fucking look tyranny in the eye and recognize fucking recognize <laughs> lift back the fucking kkk white hood fucking look tyranny in the eye guys don't be afraid be vigilant and don't get distracted by division techniques Hmm. Oh, yep. Oh, PF Gray, that's fine. Well, I'm glad that you understand. That's great. Hey, Rat Madness, I'm a they and fuck you. You heard me, bitch. Sorry, I'm all fired up. You guys, you guys are great. <laughs> all right. Uh, I said I was gonna finish this beer, but yeah. Christopher Van Syce says, stay awake, peeps. Yeah, stay awake. Thanks, Boognish. I appreciate that you said that. Um, I don't do what I do for personal recognition. But, um, so yeah, like, I'm not looking for praise or anybody to fucking tell me that I'm cool or whatever. I'm just trying to have these conversations with you guys because it's important. And... That's the best that I can do right now. Like, I grew up in Minneapolis, and I fucking wish that I could be there to help out, because I'm, I'm one of those people where I will stand between my brown skid brothers and sisters and other, um, and not being able to is, it sucks. So, this is the best I can do right now. Um, but we'll keep having these conversations, it's, yeah, alright, I'm gonna chug this beer, you guys fucking chug whatever you got with me, alright, and then I'm gonna fuck Oh, oh man, mm, mm, mm. cool, alright guys, oh, that's cold. Oh, my eyes are watering. So cold. Alright, now it's time to fuck off. And if you guys got further stuff to say, whether it's, um, whether it's constructive or destructive, fucking comment below and let's have these conversations because it's important. Alright, stay safe, stay vigilant. See you next time.